what fetal monitoring should be recommended. Women should be informed that while evidence is lacking, continuous electronic fetal monitoring or EFM may lead to improved neonatal outcomes. Breach presentation is associated with an increased risk of cord prolapse. During delivery, cord compression as the head enters the pelvis is common. This is likely to be better tolerated by a fetus that is not hypoxic. Equally, good fetal tone enables easier breech birth and is more likely in a non-hypoxic fetus. While good evidence is lacking and higher interpartum cesarean section rates should be expected, electronic fetal monitoring is likely to improve neonatal outcomes. Where EFM is declined, intermittent auscultation should be performed as for a cephalic fetus with conversion to EFM if any abnormality is detected. Where EFM or electronic fetal monitoring is considered abnormal before the active second stage, cesarean delivery is recommended unless the buttocks are visible or progress is rapid. Fetal blood sampling of the buttocks, although technically possible, is not recommended. Where should vaginal breech birth take place? Birth in a hospital with facilities for immediate cesarean section should be recommended with planned vaginal breech birth, but birth in an operating theater is not routinely recommended. Labor complications, including the need for cesarean section, in up to 45% of women are more common with breech presentation. Birth in water is not recommended due to the lack of gravity and difficulty anticipated if intervention during breech delivery is required. What guidelines should be in place for the management of breech birth? Women should be informed that adherence to a protocol for management reduces the chances of early neonatal morbidity. The essential components of planned vaginal breech birth are appropriate case selection, management according to a strict protocol, and the availability of skilled attendants. A Cochrane review of expedited versus conservative approaches to breech delivery found no studies that address this issue. Accepted principles, however, are established. These include assisted breech delivery, rather than breach extraction, and continuous support for and communication with the mother. Management of the first stage and passive second stage. Adequate descent of the breach in the passive second stage is a prerequisite for encouragement of the active second stage. The first stage of labor should be managed according to the same principles as with acephalic presentation. To reduce the risk of cord compression, amniotomy is reserved for definite clinical indications. Where the progress is slow, cesarean section should be considered. In the presence of epidural analgesia and a contraction frequency of fewer than 4 in 10, however, oxytocin may be considered. A passive second stage to allow the descent of the breech to the perineum prior to active pushing is recommended. If the breech is not visible within two hours of the passive second stage, cesarean section should normally be recommended. What position should the woman be in for delivery during a vaginal breech birth? Either a semi-recumbent or an all-force position may be adopted for delivery and should depend on maternal preference and the experience of the attendant. If the latter position is used, women should be advised that recourse to the semi-recumbent position may become necessary. Compared with the dorsal supine position, the all-force position considerably increases pelvic dimensions on magnetic resonance imaging. Delivery with the woman in a forward-facing position or squatting or all fours is a position favored by many experienced operators claiming, particularly, that it is easier to observe for signs that the delivery will be more difficult.
The principal difficulty with an all force position is when maneuvers are required. Most obstetricians are more familiar with performing this in a difficult breech birth with a woman in a dorsal position. If a woman chooses a forward-facing position, they should be made aware that if interventions are required, they may be given assistance to move into a dorsal recumbent position. Maneuvers in an all-fours position can be performed, however, and if the operator has the skills of undertaking the maneuvers with the mother in a forward position, this should be performed without delay. What are the principles for the management of active second stage and vaginal breech birth? Assistance without traction is required if there is delay or evidence of poor fetal condition. All obstetricians and midwives should be familiar with the techniques that can be used to assist vaginal breech birth. The choice of maneuvers used, if required to assist with delivery of the breech, should depend on the individual experience and or preference of the attending doctor or midwife. While involuntary pushing may occur earlier, encouragement of maternal effort should not start until the breech is visible. Once the buttocks have passed the perineum, significant cord compression is common. Traction should also be avoided. A hands-off approach is required, but with appropriate and timely intervention, if a progress is not made once the umbilicus has delivered or there is poor tone, extended arms, or an extended neck. Tactile stimulation of the fetus may result in reflex extension of the arms or head and should be minimized. Care must be taken in all maneuvers to avoid fetal trauma. The fetus should be grasped around the pelvic girdle, not soft tissues, and the neck should never be hyperextended. Selective rather than routine episiotomy is recommended. Signs that delivery should be assisted include lack of tone or color, or delay, commonly due to extended arms or an extended neck. In general, intervention to expedite breech birth is required if there is evidence of poor fetal condition or if there is a delay of more than 5 minutes from delivery of the buttocks to the head or of more than 3 minutes from the umbilicus to the head. The semi-recumbent position there is little comparative evidence regarding techniques of assisted breech delivery. If the back starts to rotate posteriorly, gentle rotation without traction should be used to ensure that it remains anterior. Once a scapula is visible, the arms can be hooked down by inserting a finger in the elbow and flexing the arms across the chest or if ducal, love sets maneuver is advised. Delivery is achieved either with the Moriso smelly vit maneuver or with forceps. Suprapubic pressure will aid flexion if there is delay due to an extended neck. Delivery using the Burns Marshall technique is not advised due to concern of overextension of the fetal neck. An alternative is a routine use of the Bracht maneuver. Following a spontaneous delivery to the level of the umbilicus, the body is grasped in both hands keeping the legs flexed against the baby's abdomen and without traction is brought up against the symphysis pubis frequently accompanied by a suprapubic pressure. The all force position. The limited evidence suggests that spontaneous delivery without assistance will occur more often. Management of the preterm breach. How should preterm singleton babies in breach presentation be delivered? Women should be informed that routine cesarean section for breach presentation in a spontaneous preterm labor is not recommended. The mode of delivery should be individualized based on the stage of labor, type of breach presentation, fetal well being and availability of an operator skilled in vaginal breech delivery. Women should be informed that cesarean section for breech presentation in spontaneous preterm labor, 
at the threshold of viability, 22 to 25 plus 6 weeks of gestation, is not routinely recommended. Women should be informed that planned cesarean section is recommended for preterm breach presentation where delivery is planned due to maternal and or fetal compromise. Breach presentation is more common preterm and most preterm deliveries are unplanned as a result of a spontaneous preterm labor. The evidence regarding term breach should not be extrapolated directly to preterm breach delivery. Rates of perinatal morbidity and mortality are higher following a preterm delivery, irrespective of the mode of delivery. Several retrospective cohort studies have evaluated the relationship between low birth weight and breech delivery. Cesarean delivery was associated with a survival benefit across all birth weights, but morbidity was higher in the cesarean section group. Up to 25% of all preterm deliveries are iatrogenic due to antenatal complications such as preeclampsia, fetal growth restriction, and antepartum hemorrhage. For women requiring planned delivery for maternal and or fetal compromise with a viable fetus in breech presentation, elective cesarean section is recommended. The poor outcome for very low birth weight infants is mainly related to complications of prematurity and not the mode of delivery. In the absence of robust evidence that a preterm baby presenting by the breech needs to be delivered routinely by immediate cesarean section, the decision about mode of delivery should be made by an experienced obstetrician following a thorough clinical evaluation and in consultation with the woman and partner. The stage of labor is critical. The course of preterm labor may be protracted and unpredictable. Immediate cesarean section may lead to earlier delivery than vaginal and might hinder the effect of steroids or prevent the use of magnesium. The stage of labor is critical. The course of preterm labor may be protracted and unpredictable. Immediate cesarean section may lead to earlier delivery than vaginal and might hinder the effect of steroids or prevent the use of magnesium. Likewise, it is prudent to reassess the patient in theater immediately prior to cesarean section in order to avoid the unfortunate situation where the uterus is found to be empty with the fetus already delivered vaginally. How should labor with a singleton preterm breech be managed? Labor with a preterm breech should be managed as with a term breech. Where there is head entrapment, incisions in the cervix, vaginal birth, or vertical uterine incision extension, cesarean section may be used, with or without tocolysis. Evidence concerning the management of preterm labor with a breech presentation is lacking. Routine amniotomy should be avoided. A specific problem encountered during preterm breech delivery is delivery of the trunk through an incompletely dilated cervix. This occurs in up to 14% of vaginal deliveries. In this situation, lateral cervical incisions have been used to release the aftercoming head. The RCOG Strat OG program recommends incisions at 2, 6, and 10 o'clock. Similar rates of head entrapment have been described for vaginal and abdominal delivery. For head entrapment at cesarean delivery, it may be necessary to extend the uterine incision to a J-shape or inverted D. Management of the tween pregnancy with a breech presentation. How should a first tween and breech presentation be delivered? Women should be informed that the evidence is limited, but that planned cesarean section for a tween pregnancy where the presenting tween is breech is recommended. Routine emergency cesarean section for a breech first tween in a spontaneous labor, however, is not recommended. The mode of delivery should be individualized based on cervical dilatation, 
station of the presenting part, type of breach presentation, fetal well-being, and availability of an operator skilled in vaginal breach delivery. Almost half of all twin pregnancies will deliver preterm and decisions regarding mode of delivery need to be made in that context. If preterm delivery has not occurred, delivery from 37 weeks of gestation is now recommended. How should a second twin in breech presentation be delivered? Routine cesarean section for breech presentation of the second twin is not recommended in either term or preterm deliveries. The second twin is non-vertex at the time of delivery in about 40% of twin pregnancies. The presentation of the second twin at delivery is not always predictable. The chance of cephalic delivery may be improved by routinely guiding the head of the second twin towards the pelvis during and immediately after delivery of the first twin. On the other hand, some attendants prefer to routinely expedite delivery of the second twin by internal version and breech extraction irrespective of the presentation. There is no evidence as to which is safest. What organizational and governance arrangements should be in place to support a routine vaginal breech delivery service? Simulation equipment should be used to rehearse the skills that are needed during vaginal breech birth by all doctors and midwives. Guidance for the case selection and management of vaginal breech birth should be developed in each department by the healthcare professionals who supervise such births. Adherence to the guidelines is recommended to reduce the risk of intrapartum complications. Departments should consider developing a checklist to ensure comprehensive counseling of the women regarding plan mode of delivery for babies presenting by the bridge.